Hi, everyone. Are you as fired up as I am? Today, we've got Dan Lesiak. He is a billion dollar agent. He's an author, trainer, and coach of Hyperfast Agent. And he is here today to share all of his success secrets with you. So, if you are ready to rock it and learn, sit back and let's get to it. Hi, Dan. Thanks, Krista. Thank you. Thank you so much for that nice introduction. I'm, I'm excited to be on this show and, and to uh, get in front of all your listeners and, and hopefully offer a ton of value. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. So you and your wife have both done over a billion dollars, so a billion dollars of real estate. Yeah, we've we've done uh, a, a couple billion now. Actually, last year alone, our, our team did uh, just under four hundred million. So we were we were excited about that. Wish wish we actually crossed that mark. But next year, uh, twenty twenty, we've got our sights on uh, on hitting half a billion or more. Oh, great! So so tell me a little bit about your team. We'll just get right into it. How many people do you have on your team? Sure, we've got 56 agents right now, uh, seven inside sales agents. So those are the people that you know book all of the incoming uh, leads and, and make all of the, the follow-up phone calls. And then we've got close to 30 people on, on staff. So listing support, transaction coordinators, marketing support, social media, videographers, like we, we got it all. So we've got about just under 90 people total. Wow. So give me a favor. How many transactions is that? Put that to some, it's easier to kind yeah. of. So for us, that was just under 700 last year. Our, our average price point is around 600, 600,000 plus or minus. Man, that's amazing. And you, where, are you, where are you located? We're in Arlington, Virginia. So we're right outside of DC and we're, we're pretty big in, uh, all over that that area. Arlington's our biggest market, but we we cover Maryland, D.C., uh, most of Northern Virginia. Wow! So um, that is incredible to be doing that kind of business. I am just so honored to have you here. We're going to be able to learn so much. So we, you know, a lot of people ISAs are amazing. What what have you found? Are they are they your own inside sales ISAs? You guys have trained them and hired them. Yeah, they're our own. We've we've tested VAs and outsource people. And I know people that have tremendous success with that. So I know it works for some people and in our market and our team, we've just gotten the best results with having them on, on staff. So they're primarily in the office calling, you know, six, seven, eight hours a, a day. Uh, most of it is calling people in our database though. So calling people that have responded to Facebook ads, Zillow, open houses, you know, all, all sorts of sign calls, of course. So all, all sorts of different uh, methods. They, they do do some outbound cold calling, but probably 90% or more of it is, is calling people that have, you know, raised their hand first. And interactive. Gotcha. And you're a member of, um, are you a member of Wailopo or no? We, we used them a little bit uh, about a year ago. It wasn't working quite as well as some of the other things we're doing. But but, but again, I know it, it works well for some, for a lot of people in different markets. So like mm -hmm. every you know, and that's kind of what I would say in general is that, you know, there's a lot of great concepts that, that you teach and other people teach. And uh, you have to kind of adapt it though for your, your individual market, I think. And, and Wailopo is one that didn't get as, you know, this the results that, that we've gotten other lead sources, but I, but I know for some people it's their best lead source. You're a big Zillow user, correct? You guys, yes. you're, you, yeah, you we, guys pay Zillow. We do. And I, you know, it, it worked like we closed a four and a half million dollar buyer lead uh, in December off, off of Zillow. That was like, you know, a wham bam. Like they <laughs> saw a couple of houses and wrote an offer for four and a half million. Four and a half so. million dollars. Oh, I, you know, people hate Zillow because they have to pay. I personally, Things Zillow is great. It's just a matter of, um, you know, I mean, of course, I, I don't like having to buy my leads, but it is what it is. But, you know, if you actually work those leads, we get some great, we get great leads off of Zillow too. A lot of closings from Zillow. We, we, we track everything. So as far as calling and your ISAs, I just want to get into this because I know a lot of people have a lot of questions on it. Um, you're having them call people that are raising their hand and you're, you know, how many calls are they usually making it a day? Yeah, so they, well, we rotate and there's always some, someone's always on the money phone. So that's like an incoming new lead. And our, our goal is to respond to every new lead within five minutes. Yes. Um, that's, that's like an MIT study that we always cite that says, you know, five minutes and under means like the difference in the world. So we always try to have that initial response be extremely quick. Um, 
and then outside of that, you know, they're, they're going through and, and calling different buckets and we kind of rotate there, there could be an expired bucket. There could be a circle prospecting bucket, but, but for the most part, they're calling, uh, they're, they're calling leads uh, more, more intensively and, and frequent during the first 14 to 30 days. And, but then still, uh, you know, they still keep in touch after that. And in general, they're making like two to 300 dials a, a day, I would say. And they're probably getting 20 to 30 live conversations out of that. And anywhere from, five to 10 appointments a day per, per ISA. So as a, as a team, they're booking anywhere from 70 to a hundred appointments in a week. Wow. That's incredible. How many ISAs do you have? We have, I believe seven right now. One of them is about to make the jump into uh, OSA though. So, so we'll be back down to six. So we'll, we'll probably hire another one soon if, if we haven't already. Dan's hiring if you're in the area and you want to become an ISA. <laughs> okay, so you so you've got you've got you're making a ton of appointments. Um, so tell us what are some of your 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 secrets? What are the kind of things that I know everybody w- wants to know your secrets? I know there isn't really any one main secret. So what would you attribute to your success? If there's an agent listing right now that's or, or a lender, because I believe that these these strategies work for both. Um, and, and a lot of these strategies actually work for any sales professional. What would you say? What, what would your advice be? What would you tell them to do? Yeah, I think consistency and following up. And it, it sounds so basic, but I think if you are, are consistent with whatever you're doing, you know, marketing, prospecting, and, and you're following up, like there's there's just, it's really hard to get great service in a lot of different parts of the real estate business right now. And I think this is one of the few industries, and the same would be true for lender or realtor, where there's just not really any barrier to entry. Like you can get licensed overnight and it, it doesn't cost a lot of money to, to, to start. And within a year with, you know, no college degree, no experience, if you're just consistent and following up and, and really trying to help people, you can almost guaranteed be a, be at six figures and, and, and definitely within two years, be at, the 250k level and that's you know that's like the top one percent of all earners and and it I, I think real estate's one of the only fields i know of where the, it's just so certain that, that that kind of success can happen if you're consistent and follow up and i think i think that's the easiest thing for for people to to not do though is it is it's it, and also the consistency part of it's huge what many agents do is they have this cycle. They get busy and then they stop doing what they needed to do to, that got them busy in the first place. So having a team and having people do specific things is really, really obviously working for you. And you haven't been an agent for that long. How long have you been in the business? I, I got my license in 2011. I was part-time that, that first uh, few months. And it was something I kind of fell into accidentally. I thought I would go get a big strategy consulting job after getting my MBA. And no one, no one hired me. They didn't think I'd be good in the sales part of the job. So I, yeah, I, I got my real estate license and have have been off and running really ever since. Wow, that's incredible that you've been you've done that this amount of business and now you're you are pretty much a multi multi millionaire from it. And you couldn't get hired in the corporate world. Look at you now. They made it. That was a big mistake that they made. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I, um, lucky for you, Dan. I'm happy though about it. Yeah. yeah. Luckily for you. Okay. So follow up, um, and consistency is really, really important. It seems really basic, but we, we hear this over and over again. Um, you just got to be, you know, top of mind. And if you're not taking care of your clients, somebody else will. What else, what, what else would you say when you see agents that are coming in that are, that are newer and you see success right away, what are they doing besides just following up and being consistent? Yeah, so the ones that have the quickest and and fastest and, and biggest success, I think, are the people that can get tunnel vision. Like they they come in and they focus on one part of the market or one method of marketing or prospecting, and they get really, really, really good at it. So I, I sold twenty two million, a little over twenty two million, my first year. And it's really because I started off just focused on 200 
condos. This was back in 2012. So I focused on one building and I, I just was determined that I'm going to get as much business out of these 200 homes, you know, that I can travel in one elevator as, 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 as possible. And I got over 50% of the sales in that one building. And then it, you know, everybody moving in and out of there was kind of close by. So I was just able to do a lot of business that I could walk to. But, you know, I know another person that had a, a really, really super fast start in my area a few years later, and they did it by focusing just on expires and withdrawals. Like every day they called expires and withdrawals. And um, so I, I think, I think there's a lot of different ways to, to do it, but you just, you have to pick a method or an area and, and really focus on it. And again, go back, going back to being consistent, be consistent and don't do what a lot of other agents do that don't have success. Like they try something for a month or two and then say it doesn't work. And it, you know, it, they just haven't done it long enough. Yeah, niching is so important. We teach that like crazy. And every time agents will say the exact same thing and tell me if this sounds familiar. Well, I'm afraid that if I niche in that or that, I'm going to be missing out on all the other opportunities. That's what people think. And quite frankly, it's just the opposite. Those other opportunities are still going to show up. You're still going to get referred. You're still going to run into people. But when you really niche and hone in on the marketing aspect and you know dominating online on that aspect and really being top of mind awareness and really showing up as that authority figure in that niche, then when people are searching, you're always going to show up. So you're just ensuring that whatever that niche is or that neighborhood or that type of buyer, that type of seller, maybe it's move up, move down, FHA, um, you know, a certain condo, maybe the condo king, like what you like what you did or a certain subdivision, then you're just ensuring that you're going to actually be seen. And then when people in that area are thinking about buying or selling, you're always going to be top of mind. Yeah, I agree completely. I, I like to use this analogy of picking up a handful of pebbles and throwing it into the side of a glass building. Like that's not going to do anything, right? But if I but if I pick up a big rock and I throw it into a small window pane, it's going to go crashing through it. And and you know you have to f- focus the most amount of energy in the smallest amount of area that is big enough to give you some business. Absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Okay. That, that's e- excellent advice. And uh, I'm sure it's something that you teach your, your students and as well as your the agents that come into your office. And it's something that I speak about all the time. And I, I mean, does everyone tell you the same thing? Like, oh, I'm afraid if I do that, this is going to happen. I hear it every time I tell people to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, they, they either say that or they say, well, that there's, there's not enough business there or that won't work in my market. It's, it's usually something like that, but it, it, you know, finding a niche can can work in every market. There's just I've no no doubt about it. And just honing in on it, you want to be the the content slash marketing slash be there everywhere person regarding that niche, that neighborhood, that subdivision, whatever you decide to do. Dan, that that's great advice. What else would you recommend? And what 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 are some of the mistakes that you've made in the industry and in the business that you could share with us that we watch out for? And then what are some things that you maybe could say, hey, this was a really good idea or a strategy that worked that kind of took you from zero to hero? Yeah, I mean, one of the things I would have done differently was I would have hired sooner. So I think too many agents wait too long or, or never hire. And if, if you fall into that trap, you can never grow the business beyond yourself. And, and you really don't have a business. You just have a, a highly compensated and probably highly stressful job. Yeah. Right. And, you know, we always talk about the stat that like 87% of agents don't make it or only 10% get above hundred K. But the other interesting thing I see is, you know, I've, all, I've only been in the industry for seven, eight years now, I guess. Yeah. Eight years. Uh, but, but I can look back about eight years ago and, and the same people that were making like 150, 200 plus or minus, you know, that, that range, they're still making that same amount. And, and, and a lot of them are still very hectically running around. And to me, it's, it's mind baffling. If you're making 150, 200, like why not go out and spend 40 grand, 50 grand on a really good assistant transaction coordinator and, and, you know, create an opportunity for someone else be able to deliver better service to your clients and be able to deliver, you know, a better life for yourself because you're able to, to scale beyond you. So I think I, I would have hired sooner. I, I waited till the end of my, my first year and, you know, I was well beyond doing three deals a month at that point. I, I probably would have hired at 
when I got to two deals a month. Um, and, and, uh, you yeah, know, that's, that would have helped me grow, have, have grown a lot faster. Uh, another thing I think that Carrie and I probably would have done differently looking back is when we got to above 300 deals a year, we, we sort of stalled there for a while and, and, and tried to, I guess, just be consistent, maybe work on our systems more, but we, we quit kind of pushing, you know, the, the top line growth and it, it didn't, it didn't really hurt us financially, but I think it, it caused us to not grow as fast and it, you know, it's more about the personal challenge of it. So right now, like we're, we're busier than when I was a solo agent you know, doing 30 some odd deals a year. Um, and, it, and it's just crazy, but, but if, if you really want to be operating at, at the highest levels and push yourself, you got to keep raising the bar and, and raising the challenge so that you can grow and expand into the situation. So I, I think I would have, you know, pushed a little bit harder, uh, set, set the goals a little bit higher dur- during the, those you know, one or two years where we kind of pulled back a little. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I love hiring people. I cannot agree with you more. I, uh, my first year I sold 69 houses. I didn't even have an assistant and I was going crazy. I remember and it was all buyers too. <laughs> it was like, yeah, wow. All buyers. And, and so <laughs> had I been smarter, I would have um, hired sooner, but I really, I learned that really quickly. And so now my kind of, my analogy is I always hire people before I need them to help push me to the next level. And the reason being is there's so many things that you just can't do. You can't do everything by yourself. We, you can't be, you know, a, an amazing marketer. You can't run social media. You can't be your own videographer. You can't be your own editor. You can't be your own photographer. You can't, you know, create your own flyers and just, and do all of it and do it well, right? You, you need to do be out there being face to face with people and actually conversating and developing relationships and being in front of buyers and sellers. And the more you're behind the desk, the least that you can do that. So outsourcing, going to places like freelancer.com or my outdesk or fiverr.com and getting some people to help you with those kind of things is always really highly recommended. I couldn't agree more. Or once you're making a hundred thousand dollars, hire help. If you want to make 200,000, you're not going to get there by continuing to rely on yourself. So and, and, and Dan, there's not a lot of people that make that much money, especially like you said, e- so early on with the, such an easier barrier, such an easy barrier to entry, um, we should, they should be hiring help all day long. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll, I'll give like one analogy on it. Cause I, I think the, adv- you know, a lot of people go out and hire the buyer's agent first, which then now you're the admin for yourself and that buyer's agent. So I, I think that's a tough uh, route. To, to go down and, and maybe for someone it's, it's the right thing, but I think by and large, you should either get an admin or an ISA first. And the, we get the most pushback on the ISA. And it's, it's real interesting, you know, when you think of like how much money you spend on marketing or time you spend on doing it. And then if, the, you know, if you're by yourself or, or, uh, you know, maybe you just have a buyer's agent because you went that route. And, and you, you're an appointment, you're sick, you're whatever. And these leads are coming in. We know it's like a thousand more times effective to call them back in five minutes than an hour. Like how much money are you losing by not having that ISA? And, and the way we pay our ISAs, uh, we give them a base salary and, and the base will be different depending on your market. But we're, we're in the two to three K per month range and we pay them 5% commission on the, the deals as they close. So, you know, at our, at our price point, 600 K price point, and again, this will be different for everyone, but if they get us one extra deal, right, that's, that's $18,000 of, of revenue to the team. So, you know, it, it only takes like one deal in their first six months to, to, to make it worth it, which you're going to know within a couple of weeks of them being on staff, whether they're good or not. And if, if you made the wrong decision, you know, you can correct it quickly, hopefully, but um, it, it's just something that it's so easy. You know, the, the hurdle rate to, to get the ROI on it is so low because people are so resistant. You've made, you've mentioned ISAs now twice. And, and so what would your tips be on what, you know, calling within five minutes is great. Um, and any other advice you can give on, on an ISA? 
Yeah, I think I think it's as resistant as people are to hire one. I think it's a really good idea to hire two because it's a, at the same time because then it, it gives them you know more more opportunities to role play, push each other, and, and chances are one of them probably won't work out, and you just have to be okay with that. Uh, I, I always make sure in the in the interview that we're screening for financial motivation. So mm-hmm. same same thing with our our buyer or listing agents, but I, I want to make sure early on in the process that they're motivated by money. Like, yes, I want them to be a great cultural fit and care about our clients, care about our team members, but if they're talking about how they have a passion for real estate and they like HGTV or Rob, you know, whatever real estate reality shows there are, but, but I don't hear them talking about like their financial goals. It, it, you know, I'm starting to get scared <laughs> because, because it's, it's, you know, make, get, getting on the, the phone and uh, talking to 20, 30 people to, to book four or five appointments a day. And, and it, it, it can be a little bit of a, a grind and a little bit of, you know, something that a passion for real estate might not get you through. But if you're financially driven, you're going to like push through that, especially that first month or two that it takes to start booking appointments consistently. And then now they're reliant on you or your buyer's agents, taking that person out, showing them homes, closing them. It's, you know, they're they're not going to get their commission, their bigger commission checks like right away. So Mm -hmm. you need to make sure that they're financially driven enough to get through that and be really good. Now we've got several ISAs on the team that are going to, you know, net six figures or more this year, which I'm, I'm really proud of a lot. Like they're just, you know, an amazing group of people and, and you know, they're, 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 they're crushing it, but I, I don't think you get to that point unless you're really, really financially motivated. And do you give them a disc profile, probably like a high DI personality type, I would assume. Yeah, we give them a disc profile, and, and typically in that role, high high D and I is going to be good. High high D and C can be good as yeah. well. That's I used to test pretty high for for D and C when I first started, and um, now I, I have more I in there now. But um, but so I think either combination of, of D I or, or D. Yeah, they have to be more organized with the, with the C part. They have to be more organized, and you definitely need that for for an ISA. Okay, well, this has been great. I, I really appreciate your time and all everything you're just sharing over your secrets. Is there? I know that you. Um, is there anything that you want to promote to our audience? Yeah, if if you want to download a uh, hundred tips from my book, you can go to hyperfasttips.com and and uh, you can uh, you'll you'll get those. Uh, downloaded to you and that there's also an, an an offer that if you do that where we'll offer to give you my book for free you just pay the shipping so if you go to hyperfast tips you can check that out if you want to check out our website it's hyperfastagent.com i so appreciate that go and download remember it learning is great but if you don't implement nothing happens let's just go over some core things you talked about hire somebody sooner than later right you need help Make sure that you're consistent and follow up. We heard that a lot. We hear it all the time. And so, you know, get yourself on a path. And lastly, niching. Pick pick that specific niche that you want to go after. Hone in on it. You can throw a rock through the window, but when you throw pebbles, they just spread everywhere. Dan, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. More than you know, you've been, you've given us great value. Make sure you go to happerfasttips.com. And I always tell, I always ask every question to the at the end, and the, the question is this: If you can give us just one tip, just one thing that you wanted us to do, or or that would help it, the people listening, what would that be? Whatever you thought was the most valuable uh, you know, thing that we talked about today, just go out and do it. Don't, don't analyze, don't sit around and, and you know, worry about it or overthink it. Just, just commit to doing it, like schedule it right now on, the, on, the, on your calendar that you're going to go do whatever you thought was the most valuable thing we went over. So he said, take action. Okay, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. We appreciate it. I appreciate you spending this little bit of your time with me today. And as always, make it a great day. And I will see you on the next podcast or uh, video. Thank you. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. 
And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.